There now follows a party political broadcast on behalf of the Speed Party. Hello. We at Gareth Jones on Speed guarantee that for the next 30 minutes we will not talk about the flaming general election. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed, the world's fastest podcast. <gasps> that fast i should have just speeded up i'm gareth he's zog hello he's richard hello and this week in the world of cars we have mostly noticed that all car companies are evolving into one car company i'm talking specifically about the alliance do we call it that tie up merger sharing development project that's going on between daimler benz ag is that their full title uh yes or oh, da- just daimler just daimler just daimler AG. is that what they are now yes and renault nissan, renault nissan which is genuinely the called the renault nissan alliance is that actually what they're it's called? honestly called that and, rna uh, well i i don't know whether they abbreviate it but it always reminds me a little bit of Star Wars for some reason. <laughs> the it alliance. sounds a bit like the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> it makes me think of airlines somehow. You know, it's always they're all yes, sort of you know Star Wars. Exactly, Star yeah. Wars. So Actually, there that? may be something here. They could be code sharing on cars, where you could have like a hmm. Uh, wow, well, I was going to say. Porsche have got the 911. You couldn't have another car called the 911, could you? But if it was... Ah, OK, if Volkswagen and Porsche... Do you remember the old 411 LE variant? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you've got the 911. That's almost code-sharing, isn't it, from the VAG empire? Do you ever lose yourself on the internet a bit? You know, when you go to look for something and you actually just end yeah. up... It's the yes. same as looking uh, in a cupboard yes. and just look, you find things you've forgotten you've got. Yeah. yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I did that the other day, and I, I do this a lot with cars, and I just get slightly distracted and then spend, like, half an hour... Follow the chains of up, links, yeah, and it reminds me... On something that, I didn't yeah, know that much yeah. about, and, and then sort of trying to find out more about it. And I did that the other day with the Volkswagen K70. Ah, yes, yes, Are which was born... Of, yes, it was born as an NSU. Yes, It was, was. supposed to originally have a, a Vankel or rotary engine. It was actually marketed with the engine from the... Oh, what would it be? The 412 LE variant, I think, at that... What was it air-cooled? No, it wasn't. It was water-cooled. I but it had, it, it had a four-cylinder engine. You I know what? I, I mean, I, I had to think I had to curtail my research. <laughs> I don't know whether it was ever designed to have a Vankel rotary engine because... The famous uh, RO80, oh, the yeah. NSU, that of course Lovely. we all know and love. The RO bit is, stands for Rotary, Rotary, Rotary. Yeah. Operation or something like mm. that. I think it's actually like it's got a small O. It's just rotor, isn't oh, it? Yeah. K70. The 70 meant it sat sort of one below the 80 in the range. Uh-huh. And the K stood for whatever the German is for conventional... The sort of ah, piston engine. Something to do with... Yeah, piston engine, I think yeah. it is, actually. And, um, What's it's the German really... word for reciprocating? I wonder. Oh, it's yeah, massive. I'm just, I'm just it's some absolutely massive. Like, mass- you can K- go... It's <laughs> <K-Jetronic, laughs> like, isn't there? For a fuel whole V12 that. could go through a full cycle in the time, and more, <laughs> in the time it would take you to say the German... <laughs> 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 what, is he, what does your Porsche call that gearbox? Or is it oh, oh, the double shift, the P... PDK, but it's just like... You can nip off and have a brew while they're saying that and come back. But the whole story of its development is there in the name, I'm sure. Well, it is. It does the thing. It has highs, it has lows. It's got a little subplot about a badger that no one saw coming. It's incredible. It's not just a gearbox. I mean, it's it's a really, really sort of life-changing experience if you get into it. Thankfully, none of us speak German, so we've never had to go through that. The emotional roller coaster of that. Of I think that I can name. only remember two phrases. Phrases from from learning German at school. Go on. Uh, so I'm a harpoon, ich habe auch, uh, which I think means I've got a harpoon like that too. <laughs> yes, uh, I think it might. Uh, do. T- t- uh, I, don't, I don't know why that, that actual phrase was in. Uh, Tentunstelling. Was, was that one? Or is it, is it just me that knows that? Tentunstelling. Yeah. The, the whole, I've left the beer in the tent. Uh, no, do. it's. Uh, I don't know. I was off. My um, my, my colleague, uh, my top gear colleague James May, only knows one phrase in German, and it is. I don't know what it is in German, but I know it literally translates as "Well, of course, Hans is wet. He's been standing under a waterfall." That's useful. <laughs> and I can say "Meine Schwimmwagen ist." which means my, my amphibious, amphibious car is round the car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also I can say van fahrt die zug nach Köln bitte. Which means... When does the next train to Cologne leave, please? Now that's a useful one. It is, unless yeah. I'm in Cologne. 
Well... Then I'm in trouble. You, yes. These phrases, however, but could they... be useful for you if you were, say, for instance, someone who worked for Renault Nissan. And what, suddenly the Rebel Alliance? Com- <laughs> I'm suddenly confronted with having to I work see, with Mercedes. You like the way I, I see how you did that. that. Brought it that back to the subject. That was That's very good. slick. Really that was, I, see, I see what you're doing there. So. I, I'm a presenter, I leave. <laughs> it's, my ju- it's my duty it's in life. Okay. So, so is this going to work out? Because the last alliance, the old Daimler-Chrysler alliance, was a torrid old disaster for both parties, well, really, wasn't this, it? Well, be, being sensible for a moment, this is, I think, the way the industry is now going, the car industry, rather than doing proper link-ups where you buy companies or you merge companies... Particularly the German manufacturers have been burned by that quite badly. Mercedes or Daimler, the whole Chrysler thing didn't work out. Mm. BMW and Rover didn't work out. And they've realised that trying to mesh two different companies from different countries is not necessarily the way to go. So these are much more sort of soft alliances where essentially it's a sort of agreement to have common ground, develop mutually beneficial... Share technology, share and yeah. share Engines, intellectual property. Chassis, but, uh, but then yeah. retain the ability to be your own company, to put your own stamp on these things, but just share the expensive parts of making a modern car, which a lot of it is having to engineer yeah, stuff Which seems scratch. to be quite a smart way of... It's yeah, a it's a BMW's bit. already doing it with Peugeot, with the engines in the Mini. Mm. And Ford. Ford yes. are also doing it with Peugeot, with yeah, yeah. the same set of engines. It, it, they're all connected. It's a bit like two halves of a racing team in F1, where, yeah, yeah, we're sharing all our data, yeah, yeah, but they're keeping a yeah, little yeah. bit back as well, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were about to describe scrap heap challenge, then. <laughs> <laughs> Casting aspersions on what Mercedes and the Rebel Alliance are actually going to come yeah. up with. For them's what don't know is that they're going to do what for Mercedes will be small cars yeah. uh, is, is the this is thrust of it. it's front wheel drive is, is although it's they're the talking A-class about size. yeah that's the thing the A class essentially although you see them around a lot has been a complete disaster for Mercedes because it's a unique platform in as much as it's front wheel drive mm. and no other Mercedes is. And it requires unique engines, mm-hmm. pretty much. Canted at a slightly Canted funny at angle. At a certain well. angle. And yeah. the, the whole the sandwich floor, very, very clever. But a lot of that was driven originally because it was always intended to be an electric vehicle or at least a hybrid. Mm-hmm. So the gap mm-hmm. in the floor with the sandwich was intended Battery for, for batteries, batteries. Yeah. or massive quantities of jam. Neither of those <laughs> things worked out. So <laughs> the next A class and B class will be just conventional front wheel drive cars. And that's where Nissan and Renault and the Rebel Alliance come in. Well, this is the thing. I would have thought that if you're getting into an arrangement with Nissan Renault, one of the things that you're after is what they're doing in the electric and hybrid car area. The, you yeah. know, the, the, and, and in turn, their sort of Project Better Place tie-up, that whole side of things, is, I would have thought, is quite a well, significant part that's a great of the name. Nissan Daimler have sort things. of said this week that uh, from their side, that a lot of their electric car stuff, you know, got this Leaf electric yeah. car going, yeah. that that's not necessarily on the table but then Merck have got their own stuff going on there. So That surprises me if that's that's the case. Well, I, well I don't know. Mercedes have been working on gas turbine and hydrogen technology with mm. AC Delco for a number I of think years. This is the thing, it's not so much dead about dead the, dead the, dead the distant future, about opinion. the sort of future of propulsion. I think this is actually much more of an expedient relationship this is more for, of a short term the, for the short term and yeah. medium term where they just need to have a small front-wheel drive car, not least for their CO2 emission what? averages. Like the, the old pro- Nissan uh, oh, Alfa no. Romeo Arna. Very how Europa. awful that was. Yeah, that was a sort of prototype for this arrangement, but the only difference is that it was goppingly terrible. <laughs> and I presume they're going to try and avoid making something that bad this time around. Oh, you no, hope no. so. Yeah. Neither of them have managed to make a terrible car for some time, really, have they? Um, Mind you, the Laguna's dull, isn't it? But I wouldn't say it was a terrible um, car. Um, what? Um, you leave the R Class alone. I love the no, R Class. No, I'm not going to go near the R. Have you seen Good. the facelifted it? Yeah. The facelift is your yeah. favourite car in the yeah. whole world. It just looks just a bit for more you. bland. Did they ring you and ask if you liked they it? They should have done. <laughs> I'm the only person who does like they that They should have car. invited you over to the design studio and just gone, here, do you want it here? Do you want a headlight here? Do you want it? Where do you want it? Because you're the only person who's going to like it anyway. So. I want the front end to look a bit like one of Noddy Holder's hats. And a Gilbert Invader. Oh, he now, stop it! <laughs> So, Gareth, we thought we would invite you here to the Mercedes R and D Center to see our new R Class. Wow, looks great. Yeah, and since you are literally the only person in the world who likes this car, we've customized some of the features. Here, this is now the sound the parking sensors will make when you get close to an object. Baby, baby, baby! Well, yeah. <laughs> 
I like that. Yeah, and this is the sound the navigation system makes when you reach your destination. It's Christmas! Brilliant! And also the owner's manual is now entirely written in Welsh. Fantastic. Hang on a moment. This is just English with some extra L's in every word. Hmm. We have been misinformed. Talking about this uh, idea of car companies coming together, you know, obvious ones are Peugeot, Ford and BMW who are already inextricably linked. But could we see less likely mergers coming about? Not so much mergers, but... uh, uh, partnerships. You know, who would you put together? Well, I'd like to revive the Citroen Maserati type. Ah, I think yeah. that would be a good one to come. Oh, hey. Let's, Citroen, they do wonderful things, you know, from time to time. But so often recently, they they just disappoint. Yeah, how let's, good would it be if you, if you could get a, a Maserati-powered let, Citroen again? Well, listen, yes. let's, let's break this down. We're almost there, if you think about it. OK, Maserati are owned by Fiat Group. Yes. Citroen, BSA. Right. Yeah. Yes. Fiat and Citroen are already in bed together with the what is the Peugeot eight hundred six, the Evasion, the Citroen Evasion, the, the uh, synergy, the synergy mm-hmm. as it is in certain yeah. packets, uh, the uh, the TP or whatever it was called. And so yeah. you've kind of got Citroen and the Fiat Group encroaching on each other there. Mm. All you have to do, Zog, is go to Northern Italy and shove that Fiat factory a little bit. Further to northwest, yeah. and get into France, yeah, somehow, and, and they might accidentally start making Citroens with Maserati engines again. Actually, I saw a Citroen SM shooting brake. Someone sent me a link on Twitter of that the other day, and frankly, a sexier thing I haven't seen since that last sexy car I saw that was also a shooting brake. Also a shooting brake, yeah, because you know, which I like maybe seamlessly brings brings us in a presenter like way. To, I'll uh, set him up. You knock that, him in, Richard. That was an open yeah. goal <laughs> that of, of linkery. Um, <laughs> that Mercedes CLS shooting brake concept that was at the Shanghai show recently, uh, hey, which I know gave you a small amount of trouser tentery. Any sexy estate gets my attention. If it's sold as a shooting brake, it will definitely get my attention. I've, I've said this before. Shooting brake should have three doors, not five. I will accept five under certain circumstances. But... There is an issue over the name of this car, isn't there? Have you got it there, Richard? Well, there is, yeah. The, the, uh, this, this was fascinating, I thought. This is, uh, but you know, well, so, you know. well, yeah, in case you didn't see this, or you might have seen the car but not, have not noticed that it's called the shooting brake concept car. Now, I always think that we spell shooting brake and the brake is like the brakes that stop you. Shooting brake, normally, would be B-R-A-K-K-E. And Say that again, B R what? That's rubbish, wasn't it? I'm sorry. <laughs> right. um, it's because I'm trying to balance a laptop on my hand and I can't multitask. They are spelling this uh, shooting brake as in commercial brake, as in, ah, I've just broken my leg type spelling. Yeah. B-R-E-A-K, essentially. And being pedants, we spotted this. We spotted we this and just thought wrong. this is... I'm sorry, because I think the, the shooting brake is something that, in the UK, has always been something we hold dear, and we mm. are the home of the Scimitar GTE and the Lynx Eventer. I saw one of those in the Yeah, it's a, it's a very British kind and of car. other things very... that make Gareth excited. I was uh, driving past Paul Matty Sports Cars in Birmingham the other day. They've got the Lotus to Land shooting brake in there. No! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I Same day this. I saw that, uh, that Gilbert Invader that I had. Uh, thank you for that. Of. Richard yeah. sent me a picture. You overtook a Gilbert Invader. It was better yeah, than that. Yes. I tell you what, it was a little. You know, I was showing you that little app I've got on my phone earlier on that makes yeah, all pictures it, look all code of color in seventies. Well, I wish I'd had that on my phone at the time. I was riding in the passenger seat of a Rover SD1 oof. around Birmingham when we overtook a Gilbert Invader. Nice. It was. I literally wanted to go for a fondue right there and then, <laughs> and then watch Morecambe and Wise and do some wife swapping. I, I do like it was a, so seventies. Like it was fondue. fantastic. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, everyone went on strike, so we couldn't do any of those things. <laughs> so uh, we were talking about the shooting brake thing, and on the Mercedes press release, they've actually confronted our scepticism about their spelling. It's not a typo. They say that brake, B-R-E-A-K, or the homonym brake, B-R-A-K-E, was the name once given to carriages used to break in wild horses and also to restrict their urge to move so they could be put to work as workhorses. Since the carts could easily be broken as part of this process, people tended not to use the ones that may have been urgently needed for other purposes. Where necessary, brakes were often fitted out with variable bodies, and really only used to carry anything that might be necessary, for example, for a hunt. 
any such vehicle which was used when going out shooting was called a shooting brake or shooting brake. They've gone for both spellings there. In the 60s and 70s, motorised shooting brakes were popular in Britain and they were exclusive crossover vehicles which combined the luxuriousness of a coupe with a luggage space in an estate. Ends. For more information, you can contact Rob (laughs) Halloway, the PR manager of Mercedes-Benz Cars. His number is 01908. (laughs) I think he listens to this and he will have just got slightly worried. Now, the Mercedes-Benz PR department have either correctly anticipated that had they not put that in they would get a lot of phone calls from editors uh, querying them about that or they've come up with the best cover story ever to to cover up the fact that uh, somebody made a little slip when naming it but it does make sense actually doesn't it when you go you know know, breaking a horse in yep that's breaking E-A-K and you know, breaking it, holding it back, that's A-K-E. So yeah, that's, uh, it does make sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm just more worried that I sounded like one of those people on the Steve Wright in the Afternoon show who just reads out facts from a card <laughs> and in that sort of funny voice that I was just doing then. I was awful. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and kill myself now. Yeah. The exception to the understanding of, or the meaning of the term shooting break is the Reliant Scimitar that we mentioned a moment ago. Yes. There. It's called a shooting break because... They just break down all the time. Isn't that right? (laughs) Shooting broken. Yeah, this is Delta 592. We've got 300, a motorist travelling in excess of 90 miles per hour. The vehicle is a green Reliant Scimitar shooting brake. Well, it's a sort of small estate car. No, no, that would just be an estate car. Uh, this has got three doors. No, nothing like a coupe. No, the name derives from... Look, look, look it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to issue the ticket now. Do you know how fast you were going, madam? Oh, my God. It's a horse driving a car. I'm Princess Anne, you cheeky elf. If you think the conversations we have on this programme are geeky, you should hear us when we're not actually recording. It's about... Well, it's probably just a little bit geekier than what you hear, but... Zog and I had a conversation the other day. Um, It's our challenge to try and explain this to Richard and thereby make it understandable to the great podcasting listenership of Gareth Jones on Speed. We were talking about the lack of curs in... F1 at the moment. We noticed that Williams on the side of their car, because they haven't got any real sponsors, <laughs> apart from you and me, you know, you realise we sponsor the Williams car, us three? Hey, yeah, what, because yeah. We RBS. All own RBS. We all own yeah, RBS. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're paying yeah. for the Williams team, they better do well. right? But one of the things that they have on the side is Williams Hybrid Technology, I think it's called, isn't it, if I yeah. remember exactly yeah. right. And they're selling the technology that they developed for Kers last season for applications in industry and vehicles. Mm. It made us think about, well, Kers, you know, what, what's the downside and, and the, the upside of curs, and one of the biggest problems we reckon with Williams well, curs systems. It has been said that yeah. there, it has been reported that there is a slight issue with the Williams curs system, which very briefly uses a flywheel to store the energy rather yeah. than a battery of some kind, which. It is claimed by Williams offers some significant advantages, but there is apparently a bit of an issue with the system affecting the handling of the car. Because, if you think about it, as soon as you have a spinning flywheel, yeah. particularly one that's got quite a lot of energy bound up in that spinning mass, yes. what you have there is a gyroscope. Mm-hmm. And, as we know, a gyroscope resists your attempts to move it. You know, I'm sure we all remember, as a kid, taking a gyroscope and it behaves very oddly. When you try to push it one way, it reacts and sort of it goes another way. You've, is this ringing a bell? Yeah, it does. It yeah. does. OK, so that is just purely the momentum locked up in it. Even if it's perfectly balanced, it still has that property that the gyroscope that you'd hold in your hand would have. Circular momentum. Its momentum is rotating about one point. Angular momentum. Well, it, angular it, momentum, it, it, yeah. it has angular momentum, yeah. yeah. I don't pretend to understand the dynamics of how it works. So, but, but just because just I am quite, thing- I'm quite thick, and I, I, as I understand it, are you saying that because it has sort of, if you like, energy trapped in it, that it gains 
effectively like a weight that is much greater than its sort of physical weight. Not, not, not weight, but wait, no, what a, I'm saying two things. Oh, well, I'm, I'm saying two things. Um, first of all, at, at the simplest level, this spinning mass, by virtue of the fact that it is spinning, mm. presents more resistance to any attempt to change its orientation in space than would the same mass if it was not spinning. And also, the reaction against a force that you put into that spinning system, into that mm. gyroscope, the reactive force isn't simply in the direction of the, uh, Let me the thing acting on it. It is at 90 degrees to the axis of the force that you're so, applying to in, it. In other words, Richard, if you had a record player, you know, do you remember those record players, see these players? I've heard of them. Yeah, roundabout, flat horizontal spinning thing, right? Yeah. Assuming a Kerr's flywheel is horizontally rotating, like, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a gyroscope. If you were to look down at it from the top and you've got 12 o'clock... Hang on, hang on. A Kerr's flywheels rotate horizontally. I thought well, it was well, vertically. Well, you, you, we, this is what we're trying to establish. Uh -huh. But assuming it was rotating horizontally, if you look yeah. down from the top, you've got 12 o'clock, uh, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, right? Yeah. If you were to push it up at 6 o'clock... Yeah. What would happen if it was rotating clockwise is that if you pushed it up, the six o'clock bit wouldn't go up, but the nine o'clock bit would go up. It takes about 90 degrees for it to react to that push. I, I have to challenge that. Well, because, I, because, sorry, because, because I'm interpreting physics, physics, yes, right. yeah, so, yeah, so, sorry. Yeah, no, thank you, Zach. Yeah, uh, it's not that it takes 90 degrees, but the result is shown 90 degrees later in the rotation. That's the correct. Is that the correct if, way of saying uh, it? If you've given up on this uh, and you'd like to just go to the website, there's a picture of quite an amusing dog oh. which you can look at for the next five minutes. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. But, <laughs> so, I literally have no idea what so you're talking about. If you anymore. had a car sorry, with, sorry. It, with a really great Kerr's flywheel... Let's take it back so to the if, place. So let me go let's back. Take... If it's nine o'clock, yeah. different things happen to if it's six o'clock in the <laughs> evening. Or is it is it a.m., p.m.? Or what about 1,800 hours? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I do understand that. So, yeah. so Basically, you put a force onto the rotating disc, but by the time that force sort of... Has, 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 it, the disc has already moved past. No, no, no. No, not the, that. No, oh, God. That's the wrong one to think that's me misleading you. Oh, no. Yeah. But, no. Well, that make, renders all of how to invalid. Then, <laughs> if, you've, if you've misled me, I mean, you've misled literally millions of people <laughs> on national television. I hope you feel pretty proud of yourself. Of <laughs> well, we can't pretend to explain why this happened because because we don't know. Neither neither of us no. uh, knows why it happens because we don't understand. The, we, we, but 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 if but, you but, two but we don't do know that it happens, it, then literally it happens. no one understands. <laughs> no, I mean, my God, even Adrian Newey may be finding this slightly puzzling. <laughs> what you need to know is that need to know whatever. It, it, no, well, it has become what, a need you know, now. I won't be <laughs> tonight. The point is that if you've got what is basically a big heavy gyroscope in your car, it doesn't really matter where you put it or how you orient it doesn't matter where the axis is yeah. it is going to have an effect on the handling of the car and secondly mm. because the amount of the sort of resistance that the gyroscope will have to any force that you put onto it because because the the reaction is going to depend on how much energy is in the flywheel is in the yeah. gyroscope you know because if it's not moving there's there's no gyroscopic effect. Yeah. Once it starts moving, you get a gyroscopic yeah, yeah. effect. Okay. No, no, so, and, uh, the faster it goes, the more of it you get. So so the more energy you've got in your stored in your Kerr system, the more these forces are going to come into play. And so the handling of the car is going to change according to how much energy is stored in your Kerr system. It, makes it, it, very it, it just seems to be opening up an awful lot of potential for complicating the way that a car handles, quite possibly turning one way more easily than another. Or What so about, you know, in a lot of car engines, three-cylinder engines particularly, yeah. the counter-rotating shaft. Well, this is exactly ah, we were what thinking I about said. It. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we thought, we, we, can Instead you have two? Could you have one large flywheel? Yeah, 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 you have one above like the way you're thinking. One above the other... Each half the mass. It's a picture of a spaniel, by the way, just in case you. It's, funny. it's got very funny ears. Sorry, each, go on. Each half the mass of a larger flywheel, one yep. flywheel on mm. top of the other, counter rotating like a. That would work. Like a helicopter like a from the massive 1930s. Kinetic hamburger. That's the sort of. Like a. Yes. Sort of. Yeah. Would that work? Would that. I don't well, know. I, I don't, don't know. think I mean, it would. I'd, I'd, oh, God. I think. Could I'd... we try some of this? Possibly using one of our cars and, <laughs> Actually, some, no, no, and yeah. some sun umbrellas or something. No, no, you're right. This is absolutely crying out for somebody to or go out and get. Wheel. We want to get a couple of gyroscopes, a toy car, some gaffer tape. We can do this. We can do we this. We can do this. We can, and, and we're going to do it before the next show. We, we're we're going to have yeah. to now. Yeah. 
and we'll turn it into a bit of video. You've been listening to Gareth Jones on Speed, home of ridiculous ideas. We've got to do this now. Haven't we have, we? yeah. Oh, God. Right, I thought okay. I'd left all that stuff busy behind next week. Gonna... <laughs> also, I value my eyes. Come on, it's going to be fun. We're... Hey, let's make it out of Lego. Hey, let's. let's. Oh, God. <laughs> do you know what? Yeah, We've just accidentally found a perfect way to introduce the song for this show. There's a song. There's a song. I've written and recorded a oh, song. What's it about, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, just, I just thought we were all going to burst into song there. Sort of, I, 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 let's I, I, I do the, the show back, right pick, here. Pick it up in the back. <laughs> there. It had occurred to me. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Dear, Actually, no need for that. The, the song I've written is in the style of the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band, or the Bonzo Dog Band, as they were known later in time. The, the glory that was Neil Innes and Vivian Stanchel, Lake Larry Smith, and others, a band I grew up listening to who made no sense in the 1960s and the 70s. And this is my interpretation of what they might do if they were to write a song about a car. Of course, this isn't the Bonzos, this is the Gonzo God Hoo-Ha Band. Good, you like that? Thank you, yeah, thank you very much. And the song is Monster Car. Say goodbye, boys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, the professor was working in his garage Forcing an unholy marriage When something made of Morris Minor bits Emerged smoking from the pits It was a monster car Made for almost no cash It was a monster car He called it Sid Yes, I know it's an unusual name for a car, but McLaren built a mule called Albert once, so we really shouldn't be surprised, old chap. He grew to monster proportions in a very short time, looked a little like an Allegro estate, but washed in slime. This car-shaped beer moth was the only has ever seen, lubricated by the fluids from its mechanical spleen. <laughs> He built a monster car It was a monster car (laughs) Well, actually it wasn't that big a monster really It only had a six-cylinder engine Although of course you can fit the old Buick V8 into a modest minor If you really want to, darling Do you really want to, darling? Oh, this monster car was big and scary It had back leather seats and the dash was hairy From the scrapyards and the panic, it was a bit of a hit And if it had had an egg, I'm pretty sure the doctor would have put a bone through it Dash, dash, thump, crunch, push, pull, lever, lever if all the monsters in the English countryside Could put their monstering behind them then boarding schools in this land that is rural Could be English again, that'd be a fine thing The Queen, she liked the English car, you know Spend me up Rolls Royce Order even had a Reliant The Phil had a design my own Makes you proud to be German, doesn't it? Okay, Here he comes! Send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site or follow us on Twitter, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Gareth Jones, Jones!